what's the formula behind TFW? When I pick yellow, I will say yellow, blue, red, 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 yellow. Uh, wonder there's a anyway, can something have to be yellow? I don't know, blue, red, I don't know. I bl- I block, I push Ari out. This, 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 nice! Q! Nice. Ari, yes, please. Charlie. But get the gun out of my face! Nice. Don't flash Ari, guys! Nice. Test. Okay. Test. Don't test, Peter. Don't test us. Yeah, don't test. Oh, I d- test us, Peter! <laughs> wow. Oh, I dropped, I dropped the thing on the floor. So. Can I have Jayan Cosmere it for me? <laughs> oh my oh, god. Wait, wait, wait. What wait, the fuck? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, they're special. What? Wow. Wait, who are you going to kill right now? Wait. Are you on our side? Today is the last day of spring regular season and with no team up for elimination just yet, playoff spots are up for grabs. Welcome back to the LEC live from the Riot Games Arena in Berlin, Germany. And you know what? I hope you guys didn't miss us too much yesterday because today we'll be making up for it with some banger games. As we said, no team is up for elimination just yet, which means today is going to be extra spicy. I'm Ginny, joined with GB and Aragon. Hi, Ginny. It's a good day to be an LEC fan. Yeah, it's really good, especially since we know how much is on the line today for all the teams. There's one thing we have here at the LEC. Uh, it's competition. It is nerve-wracking gameplay. And it, most importantly, it is unexpected upsets. Welcome to the best league in the world. And uh, what? what you, don't, you don't agree? Yeah, it's an interesting take. Yeah, I mean, sure. that's, that's what we're all about, right? I mean, we have some entertainment. We might have lost to NA, okay? last time in international stage. We haven't touched the finals of an international stage since you've had a hairline. But either way, we, so do prov- me, <laughs> we do provide entertainment and great content. So let's have a look at some of the best scenarios of the regular spring split and rate them one out of 10. What do you guys think? Starting off with, uh, thank you so much for thank the whiteboards. Well. Starting off with Fnatic winning up against G2. That's peak competition right there. Mm. Interesting. I mean, it's the best we've probably seen from the 2v2 with Humanoid and Rasog again. We've seen it so many times where we often say how good they are and they're really carrying Fnatic, but all of Fnatic's Ooh, really nice. coming well together. But them two together, specifically against G2, was beautiful. Yeah, I, I gotta say, it's pretty impressive. Fnatic have looked pretty good, so considering that the, the level of play there, what do I rate it? It's quite an interesting one. I don't know. I'm not going to try and influence your decisions here. All I want to say is the last time that Fnatic actually won a uh, best of one series against G2 was in spring 2023. That was a whole year ago, man. That's crazy. So I don't want to influence your decision too much, but what's the rating? Uh, GB is... I, I can go first. Okay, this is my go artistic ahead, ability. So I, it's a 10 Beautiful. for me. It's not so much because of Fnatic. It's more so I really enjoy when G2 starts losing. Okay. And it's not to do with them being G2. It has had to do with them being the number one team. Okay. So for me to finally see a team get contested, uh, less towards us being a one team region, but more towards the others actually catching up to them and learning from them, bettering the region. That's what I like seeing. That's the 10 in my I opinion. can see it at the very least. Not with the first play though, especially since uh, I think G2 kind of ran it down there. So I'm going to go with a, a Kek W out of 10. Okay. I think, no, uh, I, that's great. Absolutely. That's crazy, mate. <laughs> so I, do, I will say, I think Caps flashing forward and almost getting lethal is a bit of a test of uh, limits. So this is my rating. Maybe it's like Kek L or Kek Kek L, probably Kek a, a call, out of 10. Yeah, because yeah. it did kind of get called. But either way, we also have nerve wracking gameplay. And uh, you can really say that from the emotions of the coaches. Swiffer particularly taking the cake in this one because honestly, I hope he's okay. I aged 10 years, he he's aged 20. GB. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to go there, but 
Damn, that's crazy. But honestly, I pretty much feel like Swiffer here as well from the gameplay we've been watching in this. Yeah. I think Swiffer is uh, very much a great picture of how us fans feels like when we've been watching some of the SK games or maybe some of the other games too. So I do totally get it. Uh, what do I rate it? I was too busy talking. Yeah. Aragon, take over. You're yapping. I mean, I think... <laughs> Oh, I'll show mine first then. I think honestly that just has to be a 10 out of 10. Be Not bad. Because it sort of established a meta with coach reacts. I think that reaction or Swiffer's reactions in general alongside pads with the flap, flap, flap kind of takes the cake. Do you want to do the flap, flap, flap? Do you want to give I mean, your impression? Like this? Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you that. We're still waiting on GB with his artistic very, I'm very abilities. Slow. I, can you not multitask? I'm actually that... horrible at that. Oh, Don't talk to me while I'm doing this right now because I'm not listening. Your brain just got Anyways, explode. five out of seven. I thought it was really good. I think that obviously mm. not all we want to see uh, has to come from the coaches when they're messing up. You want to see some happy coach camps out there too when the teams are playing good. Uh, unfortunately, it haven't always been the case. So, I mean, Swift is still in that regard. Pretty much made a meta of coach camp coming into this one because we've seen yeah. more and more coaches just be more reactive whenever something <laughs> happens on the rift now. It's a claim to fame. That's all I'm going to say. But we also have unexpected upsets here at the LEC, particularly when a team who's the bottom of the table can beat G2, who's sitting at top. That was that was crazy. It was super impressive, right? Managing to be out in small, the compositions, continuously finding huge team fight wins with these... Oh, I've got to do my reaction, don't I? Uh, but with these huge wombo combos with the Orianna and the Volley Bear, I thought they played phenomenally. It's so hard to close out games with a smolder if you're not too clean. So what are you saying? Are they inting here as well, G2? Like you said, Caps were in the beginning, or what do you, what do you feel like in terms of uh, G2 you taking could, over here? You could go the way of, you know, G2 inting, but I think Rogue played well, so I'm going to go with a Pog out of 10. I like that. I mean, it's not a Kek L, it's a Pog. A Pog is a great emote to spam in chat every now and then. Yeah. I, we don't get it too often. I can already see them, to be honest, the Pogs in the chat right now. I, I don't know about that. I mean, I can see they are making some other comparisons, but it's there's no rating. Are you I okay? I know, it's, it, it's like priceless, but unrateable mm. in terms of how lovely it was seeing. And also, my mind lazy. completely blanketed at what I wanted to draw. So <laughs> you, you get a whiteboard, double whiteboard, wow. on, priceless, priceless. Can't put a price on it, can't put a rating on it. Thank you so much. I always wanted the whiteboard. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Too. Yeah, no worries. Not good. Uh, I'm also sure that a lot of teams wanted to make it to the playoffs. So let's have a look at the teams who are still fighting for a spot to be there. Because no team, as we said earlier today, is eliminated just yet. And we have five bo ones coming your way, as usual. Looking at the standings, though, particularly, I really want to cast my eyes towards SK Gaming and below, because these are the teams that are on the chopping block. Aragon, particularly Rogue. Yeah, I mean... Tough task ahead of them. I think they've got one of the hardest routes that they have to take with a bunch of different wins that need to come on the table. But they managed to pull it off la uh, two days ago. So, interesting to see how they continue. If they can do it once, they might be able to do it again. We're going to be starting off with Heretics up against Giant X, but I want to start off looking at Rogue because we were talking about them and how they have, at the bottom of that league table, the hardest spot to be in, the most difficult one. They win against G2, which against everybody's odds, but it does mean that they would actually need to not only get a win today, but there's a lot of faith that's involved. I mean, yeah, there's the win, but you can also just see it behind me, right? Yeah. With a win, either you need Team Eretics, MDK and KC to win, or you need Team Eretics, G2 and KC to win as well. And with a loss, you're straight out locked out. So there's a lot of things here that's not really in your own hands in terms of that destiny. So it's like getting a win, potentially even hoping for a tiebreaker. This is without a tiebreaker, but I'm pretty sure no matter what, Rogue is guaranteed a tiebreaker if they do win. So there's still some... Uh, it's brutal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You need to get a win or you're out. It's pretty much it. Yikes. That's a yeah. tough spot to be in, but we have the matchup of the week, and that is going to be Mad Lions going up against Fnatic. Mad Lions, again, one of those teams that last time during winter, they managed to go to the finals of playoffs, and now they're sitting towards the bottom of that league table, and you're wondering what exactly is not working out. Yeah, I think it's really surprising, isn't it? Seeing them down all the way there, especially since winter. With a win, they're locked in, but with a loss, their fate lies in other people's hands. Other teams have to pick up wins. You need BDS to win, or you need GX, Rogue, and KC to win. So, really praying for that win as well. Yeah, Appreciate the squad so that yeah, we can actually see say, the graphic. I realized I'm kind of blocking the picture here, so you can see it up there, okay? So, with a win, job, you're locked TV. in quite easy. Without a win, well, you get all these circumstances. But let's be real, for the, all the teams today, it's really just about grabbing that win. Yeah. Because if yeah. you do get it, well, you don't have to wait for all these scenarios to happen. Just win, forehead. Just win, five head, four head, whatever you want to say. I mean, a win is a win, and that's what a lot of these teams are looking to get today. But we have KC going up against BDS as well. Unfortunately, KC is a team that we didn't even get to see in playoffs in winter. And it would be heartbreaking to <laughs> once again not have that here in spring. Because even if they win Aragon, 
there is still the faith in other teams' hands. Yeah, a real struggle. Honestly, another trial. You need to win, and then you also need other conditions. <laughs> Are you raising your hand to make a point, Jimmy? Yeah, no, I was Go just ahead. like, look up, it's up there. Okay, full screen, <laughs> thank you, production. But you're right, it's dire in a situation like this, yeah. because even with a win, it you're not even secured. You need exactly. these circumstances to happen, too. Yeah, locked out is really, really brutal with a loss, I've got to say. Yeah, but it felt like when we're looking at KC particularly, we've seen them come to life. We've seen glimpses of what they're able to do. We've seen instances where they're actually playing together as a team, but that's not always been the case. It's not always the case, and I think this team fight highlights it really well. Often, the players are on different pages with engages. I think just before this clip started, Targamus made an engage with Rakan, Rakan, used all his spells, and then Bo engaged afterwards. So it's just a bit disjointed. And I feel like that's the story of the entire the team, the entire split long as well as last bit. It just feels like they're lacking a main voice. Yeah, and you know, it. <sighs> It really is disappointing for a team with a fan base this large to find themselves in a position such as this against where there's a very real chance where they won't be making it to playoffs. Even if you take into regard after Winder that the only change they wanted to make was getting Yamato out and then staying with the five players. But some of the issues that they had back in winter is still there. And even though at the beginning of spring it looked like they were ironing out these issues, going further into our weeks now, we're kind of seeing them again. And it's very likely that they won't be making it again. So really for Casey, you have to get a win. And even then, it might not be enough without if other circumstances are not met. And when I think of Casey's gameplay in particular, I feel like it's hit or miss individual players that I see the most. Sometimes you'll see Seiken absolutely pop off on something of the Yari, but then the next day on Hui, it's just misposition City. The same with Targamas. Sometimes you'll do really well, find engages with Bo, but then you'll play his Rakan game and it just, will, it just won't be there. So. Individual gameplay as well as synergy has to be on point today. Yeah, and today is, uh, and not just that, it also all the stars have to align for a team like KC. Not the only one because a lot of other teams are dependent as we've highlighted. But let's look at the first game that we have today because it's going to be Giant X. And when we're looking at Giant X, we were counting them out, being completely honest here. Starting off, we're thinking, okay, there are a couple things that are going wrong, but now they are on the hunt for a spot in the playoffs. They have already won two games back to back this week. We weren't live yesterday, just a reminder. But today, it's that do or die. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think Giant X is really fascinating. The way they're reinventing themselves uh, consistently, pulling out champions like the Neela, managing to play uh, really good dives. But like this clip, it just highlights what their struggles were in the past, right? They would play these really hard compositions to play, uh, ones where Patrick would have to get a lead and then snowball it all the way to a Nexus explosion. But they would just get constantly um, lost on the map all the time. The fights they would pick at objectives felt like they weren't that decisive on whether or not they actually wanted to. I think you highlighted before generic cinema mode. But I oh, no, I said cameraman POV. Cameraman POV. That's what it felt like when there are objectives. I even feel like you're being generous here because yeah. it, like you, you're putting it very well, but it also just feels like they just rocked up at an objective and hoping they were yeah. going to magically win it. It didn't feel like there was any planning going into it. It felt like no one was on the same page. They had uh, so many different TP plays where it just lost them things when they went for it. The, it just felt like you were watching a team, five players loaded into solo queue. They wanted to make it work. At first, I was even... I didn't even know if they were winning scrims from the gameplay I saw on the stage as well, but the GX that started coming into this week instead. Yeah. I mean, wow, that does not look like the same team. Yeah, and it's the way they're playing too. They're not only playing slower compositions, but they're still playing that fast style with uh, Callistas into Smolder. And it takes a lot of skill to be able to close out a game versus Smolder when you're on that, you know, that Drake win, uh, Soul win condition where before Smolder gets his stacks. And there was also this really nice flank, which I wanted to highlight here because it shows a level of cohesiveness we haven't seen in terms of the team fights. Ignar finding a huge flank in the bot side uh, in that pocket of vision there, managing to beat out uh, our second place, I believe, last time they were playing Vitality. Exactly, and I also just think there's multiple members stepping up for GX now. It's not just the entire team, but I also think a guy like Jackie's on the Talia was absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal. I don't think he was missing a single knockback in this entire game, and there was multiple times where it was a priority target he was finding. I mean, he completely outclassed Vito in this, where I thought with the Syndra, he was going to have an issue from a 2v2 with a setup, but it was the other way around with Jackie's continuously um, having Vito's number in this one. Yeah, and consistently from Jackie's is something that we're going to need to see from the entire team today, particularly because getting a win here, Aragon, means that they're locked in. Yeah, locked in with a win and with a loss, it's out of their hands again. Another case where we need BDS to win to help a couple of teams out uh, in case they do lose. So it's a rough one, but with the momentum that they have, I'm sure they can do it. No, I'm good at that. No? Those are good points to me. I would uh, copy paste them and uh, link. Oh, you like I absolutely agree. No, yeah. You guys no, don't no, want to like have a bring little Bring back bit of the whiteboard. <laughs> bring, okay, we're not bringing back the whiteboard because you didn't even write anything on it. But what I we're bringing back you. instead is going to be an interview because Oramne is experienced in making these miracle runs. So let's see what he has to say because we had the lovely trouble check in. Please take it away.
Thank you very much, Jeannie. And thank you, Otto. Quenching uh, nice, your thirst right there. Uh, a nice thank little you for sip me. of Red Bull. Really gives me wings. All right. Okay. I'm going to start you with that one. Since you got wings right now, talk to me a little bit about your upcoming game versus Team Heretics because you're going to need the wings. You guys are on a two-win streak right now, but Team Heretics have also been doing pretty well recently. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they're top of the table. Maybe mm -hmm. they're top three or top two even right now. I'm not. They're uh, right at the top. They're, yeah. play they're playing for first, basically. Oh, okay. So it's like high stakes game. I guess Stream B won't uh, make a little donation for me, but yeah, very important game because right now, uh, right now the boys at the bottom were having a little party. Um, there's a lot of us over there, so I think if we lose, it's most likely tiebreakers. I don't think we can be out, but I think it's gonna be for sure tiebreaker. Uh, scenarios, so we we really want to dodge that because we're gonna have to wait here for like eight hours at the studio, so it's gonna be not fun. Um, but yeah, I think we're coming in confident. Uh, last two games have been quite good for us, um, tripled our wins uh, this week. Um, so yeah, excited to get another showing on stage, and hopefully, you know, it's a, it's a dub for us. Absolutely. You talked a little bit about Trimby making a donation over to you, so you guys don't have to wait around. That's all it is, right? How is it going into the Reef playing against Trimby or any other player that you've played with before that you have won the league with before? Um, I mean, a couple of days ago, it was bittersweet against uh, against Larsen and Comp. You know, I love them. I love the boys. Um, but at the same time, ever since I left, I kind of I've been kind of having their number. You know, so it's nothing new. It's business, right? Yeah, it's just it's, it's, it's like you know, nothing personal, kid. Um, and now Trimby, I guess he's the next one. Uh, I think last year he kicked me out of Worlds uh, with Fnatic. So, I mean, I can't kick him out of anything right now, you know, but uh, he can... You can I, deny the first. I can deny the first and also punch our ticket into into playoffs. So I guess uh, it's a little payback over there, yeah. All right, putting the glasses on. It's business time yet again. Yeah. Now, Otto, I want to focus a little bit on your career as a whole because... It's been a struggle for the past few seasons, but you have been so open-minded about everything, about coming back. And we have sat together, us two, we've had loser interviews, winner interviews, all of it. And you've talked me through every single step of the way. How important is this particular game for your career? Because you said it, it could be playoffs, could also mean nothing. Yeah, um, you know, still looking to to kind of bounce back to, to the rogue days, you know, where we were just winning a lot. Um, obviously, it's been a little bit hard with uh, with the new environment, but, you know, comparing to, to the previous year, we've been having improvements, you know, maybe our issues have been similar or my issues have been similar. But yeah, every game is very, very important when you're looking to return to form or to the, you know, to the glory days. So, yeah, it's 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 do or die every game, you know. Even at the beginning of the season when you're zero zero, it feels like you know you come in with something to prove, um, especially when you've been on a team that is is struggling um, for like you know recent history <laughs> for the last year and this year. So yeah, um, it's difficult, but it's also like you know very very rewarding when you when you clutch out some wins. So yeah, for me for my own personal growth, I would be really happy to you know smash it today. Hopefully you clutch out another win today because making playoffs potentially could get you to that MSI, the glory days that you were talking about. Yeah. Thank you for joining me so much, Otto. And Medivedi, over to you guys.